Welcome back to Samsung Games, the place to find new strategy games, and today we're going to play The Hand of Merlin, which is a really fantastic tactical game. It's a roguelike, it is not a deck builder, and it's currently in early access, so let's begin. There are as many worlds as there are stars in the sky. In each there is a Camelot, in each there is a Grail. But I am only one man. The Catechism is old, older than any of us. It has no mind, but its hunger is infinite, and its abominations have been gnawing at the veil since the beginning of time. Some of my kind would say it cannot be stopped until it has consumed the last sun of the last world. But I have hope. That is my burden. For centuries, I gathered my powers. I reached out across infinity and created the one you call King Arthur. A champion to defend each world. At great cost, I devised an instrument that could heal the wounds in reality. To you, it is known as the Grail. But Morgana lost faith in our cause. She tricked me, trapped me. And while I slept, the years passed. The worlds changed. And Arthur, Arthur failed. And world after world, lesser men took his place. Men unprepared for the coming of the Cataclysm. Now I am awake, but I am diminished. My powers are fled, my memories shattered. I can only reach out to you in dreams and whisper, go to Camelot, retrieve the Grail, take it to Jerusalem. Believe in me and your world may be saved. I have seen the beginning and I have seen the end, but I will not yield. Is Merlin. I mean, you just gotta love that intro. Because I think this game speaks for itself. It's absolutely fantastic. We'll play on normal, because we don't want to play on no easy. Alright, so here we've got our Merlin core. Apparently there's another core later on which would be cool. And here you can pick spells. So this is um, the same for all runs. So already in my test game already picked a spell. I picked a spell called Restoration. But as we die, if we gain more essences, we could gain more spells. Right now the only spell we have is Prophecy. When casting a spell, no attacks can miss for the remainder of the turn. And then Restoration on use Restore 8 health to an ally. And let's go. Now we can choose our heroes. We only have three available, so we're gonna pick them. All of them. Whoever you pick first is like the main person in the in the party, but it doesn't really matter. Here you can see their max health and max armor. This is gonna be super important in combat, then power, how much damage they do, range, and what kind of range, speed, how much they can move, and whether they have evasion. And here you can see the starting skills, and we can read about them as well, but we're not gonna do it. Let's go. His name is Morgan, okay. <laughs> Let's go. Alright, so here is our map. Now, on the top, you can see our resources. You've got gold, which we use to purchase goods and supplies and equipment. Supplies, we spend supplies every time we travel. Mana, which we can use to cast spells. What's important is that the ma mana is persistent between multiple combats, so is health. So if you get hurt, you will stay hurt until you can either heal yourself somewhere or you die. And the mana is its really hard to get, so you don't want to waste your spells. Very important. And finally, we've got Renown. This is a measure of our fame in this round, which is used to increase our rank. After many days of travel, you have arrived at Camelot. Before you lies the heart of Albion, King Arthur's dream made manifest. Here you will find the Grail and begin your quest. And we get, gain some good resources. Camelot is not as you had expected it. King Dagonet once 
No more than a jester has rare fashion Camelot in his own image. It is guardian the base, a place where the worst excesses of greed and power go unchecked while ordinary people suffer. The round table lies upside down in the courtyard overgrown with moss. I want an audience with the king! King Dagonot merely incessant with ring yawns as you explain the nature of your quest. He holds the grail in his hand, swiveling the last remains of his wine. When you are done, he tosses the sacred relic at your feet. Here, have the darn thing. I must better capture all the stories about his magical powers or silly lies. You know they say changes based on the intent of its owner? What nonsense. Tell me, champion of Merlin, what is the greatest virtue? Valor or honor? Now, we can choose, and this is going to give us a bonus. If we pick Grail of Valor, we gain one action point for this round. And, or if we pick Honor, we get one stack of Bearer of Honor. When missing an attack, gain one action point, does not decay. Now, I don't know, if, because it says with the Grail of Valor, there's only like one charge. So I don't know if we can use this once per combat, or whether we can use it like once total. So... But I mean, let's go with the Grail of Honor. I picked the Valor for my test game, so we'll do the Grail of Honor. The Grail changes before your eyes, but Dagonet does not seem to perceive the difference. See? How are your nonsense? Now go, I'm tired of your ceaseless prattling. And uh, if you succeed, tell them it was I who sent you. But if you fail, the Lion shan't be coming to your aid. I have a great feast to prepare after all. The people wish to celebrate King Dagonet the first, and who am I to oppose them? Dismisses you with a wave of his hand. Okay, we're leaving. An old maid, her hands calls from unending work, pulls you aside and offers to help you. I hear you're heading for the lands of the Moors. So you will be taking a ship from Corbenic. They say that many unnatural beasts are drowned there. The king does nothing about it as usual. Arthur would be ashamed. He would expect Camelot to assist you. Instead, I must do what I can. Here, would this old relic be of use? It is an heirloom of my family, though I do not understand its powers. So this is different. My test game, I got a very different option. So we could get Iron Boots. Bear is granted one stack of Grounded and one stack of Iron Feet. Cannot suffer knockback, takes no damage from ground effect. Ooh. Or we could just take Reputation. Nah, give me your Iron Boots, girl. I wish you good luck. Make sure you're well prepared before you reach Corbenic. Mark my word, something terrible will happen there and soon. It is a place of ancient magic and evil is drawn to such places. Don't you want to come with me, girl? Take you with me. Now here we can click on our people. Uh, sorry, not here. Um, yeah, here. And we can uh, change who has what. So we'll give the... Gra we actually should give the boots to our tank. So to Braunor. I'm gonna call him Rudy after one of my patrons. This is Zemkat and Morgan is going to be Michal. Now, Zemkat is going to have the Bear of Honor. When missing an attack in one action point... Uh, she's pretty good at shooting, so I'm gonna give that to, to Morgan or Michal over here. You, you keep it. Okay. Yeah, this is this is really cool. All right, so we are going to go. We're going to move to this area. Now here we can see the type of not regular city, arcane, heroic, and here we can see corruption. This is, for example, corrupted. The type of danger that we can find and the type of reward. So here, for example, this is like regular some danger, and we can get supplies, money, or renown. So let's go over there. Passing through a large pine forest, you come across a clearing in the middle of the woods. At the edge of the clearing, you glimpse a small dwelling under an old orc tree. Let's go. The dwelling has a little more than a dilapidated lean to. Made from branches and inexpertly tanned pieces of animal hide, in front of it you see the remains of a campfire. Some of the coals are still faintly glowing. Let's go into the shack. Inside you find a makeshift bed and a tree stump used as a table. There's a little out of furniture, but in a corner you find an old coat and boots. Both items are worn and ill cared for, but seem to have once been of high quality. You see the corner of a ladder satchel peeking out from under the dirty cloth, and are about to reach for it when a voice behind straddles you. Intruders! Oh, I told you we should lock the door! Help! Help! We are being robbed! Villains are stealing our treasure, but nobody help us. I don't know why that sounded like a Dalek. <laughs> Turn around and see an old haggard looking man standing in the entrance, brandishing a sharpened stick in order to can I kill him? Yeah, let's start to disarm him. <laughs> you step over and quickly wrench the stick from his grasp. Instead of the old man stumbles backwards until he hits the wall, then sinks to the ground sobbing, Oh please, my lords, do not hurt us. We didn't mean no harm. You frightened us. Yes, you did. 
We wish to be our friends, my lords. We thought maybe some kind strangers would come someday and take us away from here to a better place with warm fires and soft beds. How about abominations? That's what I can offer you. Sure, come on. No soft beds, but abominations on our way. After you inspect his mere belongings, the old man follows you tonight, tonight's campsite just at the edge of the woods. Seems to be strong and healthy given his age, but does not stop talking to himself throughout the evening. You'll leave and he finally sinks into a fitful slumber. Tomorrow you will surely come upon a village where you can leave him, and then the strange old cart will be someone else's burden. You wake in the morning to find that the old man is quite transformed. It seems that some good food and a night at a warm fire have done wonders for his body and soul. Made an effort to wash his face in a brook and now seems quite embarrassed at the sorry state of his attire. I do not know what to say, my friends. I thank you for your kindness. I mean, I really truly went into your house and just like <laughs> disarmed you, but okay. Apparently it doesn't have high standards, okay? My time in the woods was like a bad dream. There were voices. They did not want me to leave, but it matters not. My family lives nearby, and if you'll escort me there, I will be glad to repay your kindness. Absolutely take him home. We deliver the man who introduces himself as Balthazar to his home. As you arrive, a woman older but still handsome emerges from the farmhouse followed by a younger man who looks like he might be Balthazar's son. My love, you have returned. I thought you lost. For two years I prayed at the altar of St. Wolfred and now you have returned. Balthazar seems happy for little days by all the attention. As he lets his wife lead him inside, he instructs his son to reward you for help. 51 gold? Apparently it pays off to go into people's houses. <laughs> Jenny, I'm trying to get to combat, you know? That's why I attacked him. Jenny has brought you to a village on the town square. You find a number of stalls where traders peddle their wares at this market day. Children are weaving in and out of the car playing a game of tag. Never seen a knight before. Will you play with us? Are those really knights? I didn't know knights swelled so much. So let's play with the children. Who? The girl claps her hands in delight. You're playing cat and mouse. You know how to play? Tell her any hero worth the salt knows how to play this game and she seems satisfied with that answer. Ready? Ask one of the boys. Well, ready or not, you're the cat. So this is interesting. We have 25% chance of success. So we can essentially pick one of these numbers. Well, we'll randomly pick one of these numbers. And But it's interesting the way the game like handles options. I quite like that. I have no idea how the game is played. So I don't know if three is good or bad. I guess it's good. The children may be nimble, but you have longer legs and you manage to catch all of them. After the game, one of the three children approaches you. Oh, okay, so it was just like, okay, I understand. It's The game is called Different. <laughs> different than Czech Republic. And apparently the number was how many children we caught, I guess? Yeah, the victory sticks. It's magic. It goes to whoever wins the game. You want it fair and square. In case that stick isn't enough of a price, I have some provisions for you. Thank you for your kindness. We get Linden Branch. We get Elusive and taking damage in two stacks of evading. And evading, um, it gives us evasion, so chance to avoid, uh, to uh, make the enemy miss an attack. Losing, okay, that's really good. Okay, but do we have like too much stuff? No. Oh, we can level up this early? Okay, so we can pick new skills, so let's do it. We can pick new skills on our people over here. So, Rudy here is going to pick a new skill. So we get a random choice and from which you can pick. So we can gain, gain stack one, of, one stack of fairy, ignore damage taken from all attacks. That's pretty cool. Gain three stacks of powerful. Increase power of three. So uh, one thing to keep in mind is that this cost an action. It has a cooldown, so you can use it once and then after X amount of time. And sometimes we have multiple charges like here, where you can only use it twice per combat. Apply one stack of stagger to an enemy in melee range. Cannot use offensive abilities? I like it. So the thing is that um, often, like this guy has two attacks, so it's pretty good because he has two actions total. But some of the other ones, they don't have that many attacks. So you want to pick attacks. But this dagger is good because you can make an enemy unable to hit you, which is great. Now, she only has one attack, so with her, we would love an attack. And of course, she doesn't get an attack, which is super sad. But she can make a smoke cloud, which gets shrouded to all units inside of it. Which makes it a lot harder for them to hit people, but also for us to hit them. She could give a mark to an enemy, essentially get a hunter's mark. If any of you play D&D, &D, you know what that is. Plus two damage for taken. Okay, so I guess we could use that. It doesn't cost any action points, which can be quite useful. Or move to target location. On arrival, gain three stacks of evading. Spring. This can be pretty... Uh, 
she's an archer but this doesn't cost so essentially we give her extra movement which can but she can only she can still only shoot once because she doesn't have a second attack ability it's not that great but she does get evasion now i'm gonna take the hunter's mark please give me an attack yes okay okay so we didn't get an attack we get desecration desecration is so good desecration is the best thing you can like it is just so good okay so you can put essentially fire in an area and everybody who stands there or moves through there can take two damage on contact and the enemies they don't really care that they're walking through fire so they're willing to walk like five hexes through fire and you can just destroy their entire armor like that which is just so good desecration is like the best i like it a lot okay where do we want to go? Let's go. This is gonna be a really rough fight. I don't wanna. I don't wanna die on the first fight I show you. <laughs> this game is a bit difficult, but we're gonna do it. We're feeling brave. We're feeling brave tonight. I've arrived in a small town called Galaton. The roads to many small villages and farms that are kind of marriage here, so its market is always busy. A good place to trade supplies. So let's visit it. We could buy for three supplies for fifteen or sell. I guess we'll buy. When trade is concluded, you ask military why the market is so empty today. Ah, it's those trice-cursed bandits devil out their giblets. Every week they grow bolder, and what does the king do? Sit in Camelot and play with his spigot. Before you have a chance to say more than a few words, you're interrupted by screams. It would seem the bandits have decided to raid the town itself, bold indeed. Melditri grabs a sticks and set out to teach the bandits a lesson, but he stops her before she's injured. These men are reckless, and there's nothing more dangerous than a reckless fool. It's alright, go kill them for you. Just relax. I'm preparing for the big bag abomination fight that I'm about to do right after, so I need to practice my weapons. On some beak. Okay, okay, okay. On a lot of bandits that are not necessarily weak at all. Are you all are you all uh melee? No, this guy is range, this guy is range. This guy does not have a weapon. Like come on. Okay, he does, okay. But he has a sword over there. So these guys are ranged. So you can start with whomever you want. So we're gonna start with Zemka. Can you put a hunter's mark on these guys? No. But if I walk with you over here i'm gonna put a hunter's mark on this one and then she's going to use her regular shot to hit him now as you can see she first hits his armor and then goes into regular attack now i would like to desecrate this ground maybe okay before we do that let's go with with you you could please go here and hit these guys. So I would like you to, if you could do a stagger blow. No, no, no. Let's just do let's just do a slash. Nice. And then what we're gonna do with our mages, we're gonna place desecration over here. Yeah, like come to me and get hit by fire. And then we're gonna run. I'm thinking this way, and we're gonna throw some stuff on them next turn. So hopefully they should run through fire to try to get to us. We won't be able to to avoid these sort of ranged attacks. But what can we do? That's okay. We, we have enough. We have enough armor, and she gets evading because she got hit. So she it should be easier for her to avoid an attack next time. Okay, and you can see they're walking through the fire. And every time we walk through the fire, he got two damage. So we're essentially destroying their armor, which is super powerful. Now. Now, what's really cool about my melee guy is that he has the iron feet, so he can stand on fire without taking damage. But I think, I think you wanna, do we wanna go up here and hit this guy? I could try to bash him and push him into the fire, or I could focus on the ranged guys. Now, I'm gonna try to push him in fire. Let's see if that's a good idea. Because I can give him knockback, and now he's in fire again. Okay, yeah, and we got an achievement, which is pretty cool. Alright, now let's use our girl. First thing you gotta do is you gotta shoot... Oh, she's gonna have to run away to shoot that guy. Uh, no, you know what, let's start with the mage. Throw a singe at him. And then you can increase the armor of, of Zemka, sure. Now, I would like her... 
to run backwards. You, we've got some evasion, so we should have a chance to sort of avoid the enemy attack. I was gonna focus on the on the ranges, but I can't right now. But that's okay. So he's taking more damage as he's standing in that in that fire. He he just keeps standing in the fire like what's a diff man just step out of the fire. I know he's like I'm gonna stand in fire. But this is not great. We're gonna lose a. We still have six, five armor. Oh, this is not great. Almost run out of armor over there. Okay, so this guy's preparing a bomb, so that's pretty easy to avoid. So I could move here and kill this person. Or kill that person. Now I'm gonna move here. No, no, this will hit me. Oh, anytime I move, I will take damage. Well, that's not ideal. Okay, in that case, let's start with somebody else. So we'll start with you. Move this way and kill kill this this um, ranger. And we'll, we'll have to check if my guy can now move because I don't know. No, okay, so it was this person has the attack ready. Unfortunate. Okay, but if I move to here, we gotta get away from the bomb and throw something at this person. exactly help with my attack. I do have one healing so I could just straight up attack. Who do we want to kill? We have an attack of four so we can only kill this person. We can kill the other so it will to make us take four damage. Which I think is fine. I think we'll do it. So move forward. Also it was this person that had the reaction. I wasn't sure where the reaction shot so you can kill this one. So this person is going to throw the bomb, that's perfectly fine. Oh, I'm really glad he's shooting her because she uh, has, has armor. My melee guy does not. Perfect. Everybody's hitting. Now, now we can move towards where? Okay, let's, let's start with the others. You could shoot someone for 5 damage. You only have 2 damage, so we'll start with the... Singe on this person. Okay, just kill him. Straight up kill him. Right? And we'll give more armor to Rudy. Now next now Rudy is going to now move towards the looter and use a slash. And then Zemcat is going to move forward. Oh can I not shoot because he's in no no I can. So, so sometimes when um oh, you can't shoot at people who are engaged in melee in some games, but that's thankfully not the case here. So we'll be able to finish him off next turn pretty easily. Oh, yeah, except, I mean, he gets three evasion, so it's gonna be interesting, but... You know what, I'm just going to place another Desecration on him. We have 10% chance of a shot. Hmm. I'm going to guess 10% chance is better than nothing. Mostly I'm just trying to shoot at him. Get my people close to there so that he's not gonna hit my melee guy. You can just go and hide, man. That's all I want from me. Yeah, he dies in fire. It's good. Alright, we got a lot of renown and a lot of gold. After the battle is over, Meldatry is the first to join you on the square. You did it! You sent those dung eating rampalines to cook in the fires of hell! Ha! The wretches spoiled the devil's wrath! My, my, my husband says it carries magical powers. Perhaps he's right for once. And she gives us a reward. You get another linden branch. Ah, uh, I don't want it. I already have it. Oh, that's a few reward. You can keep this. We don't need no rewards. How gallant, but I'd hope to get rid of the bloody thing. My husband is always collecting things. You know, cluttering up the house. I swear that man will be the end of me. <laughs> Alright, let's go to do an elite 
fight. Oh. Actually, I'm... Oh, sorry, it was not an elite, but it's just a corruption, a corrupted uh, hex. I apologize for that. A man with an extravagantly feathered hat sits by the roadside. In front of him on a low table are three silver cups and a small wooden ball. Welcome, strangers. Care for a game of timber rig. Those fleet of iron, quick of spread, have nothing to fear from me and my cups. You know, they said it's King Dunnett's favorite game. Okay. The man pops the ball under the center cups and begins to move the cups with nimble fingers. It's simple, friends. Tell me where the ball is hidden and I'll double your wager. Fair and square. Guess wrong and your coin is mine. Guess we'll give it a shot. I know. I'm probably gonna lose, but... Okay. Never mind. Now we're gonna leave. Okay, so it was actually just a corrupted note. Yeah, just corruption. Not, not an elite fight. Okay, sorry about that. Help! Someone help! cries a young man running down the road towards his dress in the clothes of Radha Knight, a traveling merchant of the Herber Fate. Offer help? A caravan was set up on by brigands! I fled to find help, but that moment an arrow strikes him in the shoulder and falls forward screaming in pain. We're gonna try to shoot back. There's 75% chance of success, so let's see. Beautiful. Zemkat aims is true. Before the bandit can reach for another arrow, he's been struck down. Now we could go and attack, but we'll lose some health. So we're gonna wait for the other bandits to find us, and we're gonna do another combat. Alright. So they're over there, so we're gonna try to kinda hide behind cover and move closer. We get our armor back, but as you can see, we don't quite help get our health back. Alright, I need you to move. The desecration doesn't have a good range, so you just move also as close as possible. They have one ranger. Okay. Kind of wasted our time with them. With the desecration, because we can't do it now, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna start with our ranger. We're gonna do a hunter's mark on move this way on this first person. Hunter's mark. And then we'll do a regular shot. I mean I could make my melee guy fall backwards and put like desecration in this area. I, you know what we'll do that? So we'll start with him. We'll just run backwards like a coward. Which makes him super nervous because he's no coward but what can he do? So you're just gonna end your turn. No, 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 don't end turn. And then with uh, these guys, we're gonna place the desecration in front of them. And then he's going to use. No, he's going to hide behind cover to make them come to us. So we'll, we'll see. This might be a bad decision because they will get. Okay, the ranger is already. I was gonna say they get attacked from the ranger, but the ranger is already moving into the fire as well. Yeah, yeah, you can see. We get a lot of hits on him. Oh no, that one person avoided the fire completely. That's okay. We can start with... Uh, do we want to use the stagger blow to make sure that they can't hit anybody? Let's use Let's start with the stagger blow. And then we're going to do a regular bash. We want to keep him in the fire. Okay. She's going to shoot at the person... Just try. It's only 40% chance, but... Great. But she can't do anything else. If uh, Does the person who is attacking her, the brigand? It's the brigand, right? No. It's the brawler. He doesn't seem to have an ability to... get like... Uh, what, what is it called? Like a reaction shot. So we're gonna try to run away. It's not particularly helpful because he's probably not gonna move through the fire anyways, but yeah, let's move like this. And we're going to use our singe to hit this outlaw in the back. Looks like we're standing on fire, but we're just standing on the edge of fire. 
Now we've got enough armor, so that's pretty good. Oh, he's preparing poisons, so that's not great. So stand ready, what it means that he's gonna be able to take that reaction shot. So this time, if she tries to run away, he will actually hurt her. This person's almost dead, but not quite. I'm gonna need to move here. Well, I can't attack, can I? No. But I could move towards this this person and kill them. This person's gonna take two damage. Okay. We'll use my mage first. Kill this one. Perfect. I cannot increase armor of, of, of Zemka because I'm not close enough. My melee guy could go and kill this person. But we might be able to kill them by fire. Ah, go on, let's do it. We're feeling brave. We're gonna slash. Great. She can't run away. And she can't shoot either. So what she's going to do... Well, she'll take only armor damage though. So if I try to run here... I'll do it. I'll take three armor damage. And then run, which is going to give her evasion and hopefully make him... Actually, I don't, I may, maybe the fire will disappear. I don't actually remember. Unless I want to use another desecration, I can't. So we'll increase back uh, Zemkat's armor. Yeah, I forgot that the fire disappears. I, mean, I don't know if it's at the end of his turn. Oh, it's at the end of his turn. Okay, so it's going to take some damage here. But that's it. So we're going to start with a slash. And then we can follow it up with a bash to murder him. Beautiful. This went very well, I have to say. These greedy violent men have met the fate of their actions ordering for them. And we get some supplies and some money. Good. Now this is an arcane um, tile, so there'll probably be like some fight with abominations, things like that, but we're not on the path to get there. Regardless, I think this is a good time to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, write down in the comments and you can click on the right to watch some other games that you put on this channel. I'll see you there. Bye bye.